Hey guys, how are you? Merry Christmas. I hope you are all doing really, really well. I am taking the time to make a video just to share some of the things that I feel like God's been showing me. And I really feel like it will hopefully bring you guys a lot of comfort. I know that all of us have been under so much strain, so much attack. Um, these are these times, they are not for the faint of heart, they are not for the weak. It's been, we've seen just all these unprecedented things happening and a lot of spiritual attacks. I know a lot of the, a lot of the watchmen in the community are going through it. it seems to be a lot of people having like back pain and problems and, you know, odd sicknesses, illnesses, uh, migraines, just the enemy is just throwing everything he can at us to try to get us to shut up. And I have definitely been going through my own issues just in, in my personal life. And, um, you know, just because of the love and the guidance of God through the Holy Spirit, you know, when I am going through something or I get distracted and I start to wander off, like God is so faithful to bring me back and to show me um what he has for me and to just lead me on this this path that has been ordained by him and i am trying to get to the truth of everything right like i really became i've always been like aware of the end time stuff in revelation because growing up in the church like the revelation, or not the revelation, the rapture was a really big deal and everyone knew about the rapture and there was movies and stuff. And um, I kind of just, you know, that was, I was always aware of that, but I kind of put that on the back shelf until I lost my daughter in 2020 and um, everything in the world just seemingly started going crazy. And, you know, through losing my daughter, I won't go super into that, but God really um, put my, you know, my, my treasure in heaven. My longing um, became 100% just wanting to go home and, of course, to see my daughter again, but also to just escape um, as I became more aware, seeing how all these evil forces are really at play behind the scenes and orchestrating all of this. And the more you, your eyes open up, I mean, you could just dig and dig and dig and find so much. It's so disturbing how evil this world really is and how much this is not our home. And lately I've been feeling that really acutely as I've been um, kind of just under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, just pruning out things of my life that are um, leading to compromise, which we really don't want. I know like I still struggle with my flesh every day. I know you guys probably do too, but I know like in my heart of hearts, what I really want is this super close walk with God. I just want more of him. So I am going to, when I assess things and, and, you know, look at it from that point of view, what I really want is just more of him. I'm going to start making cuts to my life and just getting rid of things that are going to get in the way. And I'm sorry, guys, this is going to be all over the place because these are just all the things that God's been showing me lately since I made a video. But I, the big thing I wanted to touch on is that I feel like there is so much deception, even in the watcher community. And I'm not going to question anyone's motives or salvation. I think we're all just trying to figure it out, but we have to be so careful. And I've seen, and, and all of these things are really new to me, guys. Like I said, I only really started watching um, from like 2020 onwards and I'm a little bit lazy in that I don't really do my own homework. I just mostly rely on videos and, of course, reading the scripture um, to help me form my 
my eschatology. And so I didn't even know about a lot of these terms that people use in the community. And one thing that I've been, that's been brought to my attention recently is this concept of the partial rapture. And that essentially is just saying that basically only the elite, like the super Christians, who have a perfect walk with God or near perfect and no unconfessed sin in their life are going to be raptured. And one person, and this is, this is cropping up um, in a lot of places, and one person that I've, I've followed quite extensively who is now teaching this is Wayne Fowler. And um, again, I think he is just doing his best um, with what he has. I think that he's been going astray because he's relying too much on these extra biblical dreams and visions that he's having, which I mean, I love dreams and visions. I'm all about that. But if it doesn't line up with scripture, you have to throw it out because we know that the devil himself can come and appear to us as an angel of light. And especially in these end times, we know that if it is possible, even the elect would be deceived. And, and the devil is cunning. He's sly. He's not stupid. He knows our weaknesses. And if he can't get us to stop following Christ, he's going to, one of the biggest tools he uses is he tries to shift our weight from trusting in the finished work of Christ to making it more of a works thing. And I think this is what is happening here. If you really strip it down to its bare bones, it's this belief, and Wayne has even said this himself, and I'm using him as, as an example because he's the one that I've heard really aggressively pushing this lately. And he's saying the rapture is a reward. And um, I'm like, I think it's a reward too, but more in the form of a gift. But he's saying it's a reward that the super, super faithful elite have earned. And if you haven't earned it, you're going to be left behind. And then he's also got a lot of weird theories about there being multiple raptures and stuff that I won't really get into, but I want to put some of these fears to rest and I know a lot of us have wrestled with this because it is so important like we want to be raptured we know there's going to be rapture the thought of being left behind is terrifying and um we want to make sure that we're ready to go like that is totally understandable and I hope to give you some assurance um, and some clarity here about who all is going to get raptured and if the partial rapture is actually biblical. And of course, I'm going to take it back to scripture because that has to be like our ultimate guide, right? Especially with this surplus of confusion and ideas that are circulating right now. So I'm going to read a passage. It's kind of lengthy, but it's just so good. It's from Galatians 3, verses 1 through 14. And Paul says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit? by works of the law or by hearing with faith. Are you so foolish after starting in the spirit? Are you now finishing in the flesh? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing, does God lavish his spirit on you and work miracles among you because you practice the law? or because you hear and believe. So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are sons of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God 
would justify the Gentiles by faith and foretold the gospel to Abraham, all nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. The law, however, is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. So this is the kicker here, guys. Christ redeemed us from the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing promised to Abraham would come to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. And guys, that's just, it's so beautiful. I get a little emotional. Just um, the beauty and the intimacy of God's plan. And one verse that is really critical of here is... Um, are you so foolish after starting in the spirit? Are you now finishing in the flesh? And that is the question here, guys. We, we know we are saved by grace through faith. And he gives us his spirit to seal us. And it's like the down payment assuring us that we will be saved. And we are saved by grace from beginning to end, and that includes the rapture. We're not going to finish by works. If we try to get that kind of righteousness by works, it's almost like we are nullifying what Christ accomplished on the cross when he shed his precious blood and he said, it is finished. And that there is no reason why the finished work of Christ and us being saved, us being clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Why that would not apply to God's huge self, like ultimate culmination of sal salvation, which is the rapture when he, he promised he would come back. He promised he would get his bride. Why in the world would we be saved by grace, but not saved from this time of great tribulation and the pouring out of God's wrath, when the Bible says we are not appointed to wrath, like we are saved, we belong to him. Because he, when we put our faith in him, he put the spirit of adoption on us. He put his spirit in us. We are born again of the spirit. And just like we cannot be unborn Physically, we cannot be unborn. He doesn't leave us. The Bible says, he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you until the very end. And guys, I get a little emotional because I know I've really struggled. I've grappled with these things and just because there's areas of my life where I still sin. You know, I'm... I still have brokenness. Um, God has not completely delivered me from maybe some destructive thinking patterns. And um, just, I mean, we're, you know, we're human, guys. We're living in a fallen world and we grapple with these things. And then the devil comes in and tries to torment us. And, you know, look at you. You failed again. And, and we just have to remember, you know, I'm saved by grace. The Lord Jesus loves me. He knew. He knows everything in advance. So that day that you initially got saved and you felt the love of God so strong, that's the love he still has for you. Even if you've wandered off and you're not living your life for him, his love is the agape love that is unconditional and sacrificial. And that doesn't stop once we come to him. I mean, how much more does he have grace and mercy for us who are his children? He's not just 
looming over us waiting to just <laughs> bonk us on the head with a ruler and I think that in our flesh we're just so conditioned to feel like love and acceptance is conditional and it's hard for us to just wrap our minds around just how very good God is and how amazing what Christ really did for us on that cross and how none of us are getting to heaven because we deserve it or we've earned it. I know, I fully expect when I get to heaven, this is how I picture my like, I'm just going to um, lay at the feet of Jesus and just cry because... I know how unworthy I am and how much he's loved me through so much. And why would he, you know, love us so much and leave us behind? Um, so this is why I'm doing this video to just give you guys some assurance that God loves you. And if you have put your trust in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, he has deposited this priceless gift in you, which is his Holy Spirit. He's not going to take it away. And he's not going to leave you behind. Jesus said in John 3, 5 through 6, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh is born of flesh, but spirit is born of the Spirit. And guys, we're born again. We have the Holy Spirit. And another verse I want to read is Romans 8, 9 through 11. You, however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness, and that's the imputed righteousness of Christ. It says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who lives in you. So guys, it's like so cool. We have the Holy Spirit and we're just waiting at that instant when we hear that trumpet call, we are going to be changed in an instant. And this salvation, he began this good work in us. He promises to carry it through to completion. And that's going to be the completion. We're going to be forever saved. We're going to be delivered from our sin nature. We're going to be caught up in his presence. And, you know, all of us, we have lived with this longing our entire lives. And we're finally going to find it's fulfillment. I know many of us, we've gotten like little taste and just glimpses of heaven. We, we can feel it sometimes when we're just really in the presence of God. We know that's what we're created for and that's what we yearn for. It's what the spirit inside of us yearns for because we have been already brought from death to life. And how much more so when Jesus comes back to take his children home. And then this verse from 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 through 10. For they themselves report what kind of welcome you gave us and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus our deliverer, from the coming wrath. So guys, because we've turned from paganism, cultural Christianity, idols, whatever, to serve the, the true and living God, we're now waiting for his son from heaven to come and save us from the coming wrath. So this is where we're at right now. And the Bible also says, I want to say it again, we are not appointed to wrath. God, all the wrath that all of humanity has, has um, accrued, all, all that we have accrued, 
God already put it all on Christ Jesus. So for him to save us, um, forgive us, we're sealed, we're delivered, um, and then for him to leave us here because we don't have enough works, like that doesn't make any sense at all. And uh, I just want to finish up here with this beautiful verse from Revelation 3, 10 through 11. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one will take your crown. And I feel like right now, you know, probably inadvertently, people who are teaching um, a partial rapture, they are trying to steal your crown. They're trying to take your joy. They're trying to um, just fill you full of doubt and fear and confusion. And honestly, when I listen to those people, I don't feel the joy, I, it doesn't make me want to worship God. It's, it, you know, naturally it would fill you with doubt and confusion when these people, I've heard many people say like, God gave me this dream, a rapture dream, and I could see over the whole city and there was only like a handful of people that went up, um, implying that only like a small, small, tiny, tiny minority are gonna be raptured and that would scare anybody and i'm like first of all how do you know that dream is from god you don't that's why you have to check every extra biblical so-called revelation against the truth already revealed in scripture that there are a lot of people who are born again believers, who aren't perfect and none of us are, who are going to get raptured. There's gonna be a lot of people that get raptured. I don't know exactly how many, but I do know for sure that if you are a born again believer and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you belong to God. He is not going to leave you behind. You are going to be changed in an instant when we hear that last trumpet and we're going to be completely delivered. And I know that a lot of us, we have been persevering and, um, you know, we share in the sufferings of Christ. We've been going through the fire. We've been being refined. And um, because we are still holding on, again, with the strength given us from the Holy Spirit, God is going to come and rescue us from what is coming and we know it's coming, we know it's so close. So guys, just take comfort in knowing that we can't even conceive of how good God is. We do not have to live in fear. And if you still feel unsettled in your spirit, I would say to just focus and you need to differentiate in your, in your mind what is the difference between works and intimacy with God and focus on cultivating intimacy? And then the works will just kind of naturally flow out of that, just really organically. And intimacy, you know, if we're going to go back to that one parable of the 10 wise virgins that kind of scares people, he said to the ones that were excluded, depart from me, I never knew you. And so, yes, they didn't have enough oil in their lamps, which probably in my mind signifies um, the Holy Spirit, intimacy with God, whatever, but they didn't know him. So guys, regardless of where you're at, you know, in your journey, whatever, the Lord loves you. He wants to spend time with you. So you just, if you're scared about being left behind, you just need to like, no, okay. I... If you have received the Lord as your Savior, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can pray every day that he would pour out his spirit on you, that he would change you from the inside out, and then you just spend time with him and you just 
develop this really organic relationship with him. And, you know, the more you focus on that, the more he will change you. And, uh, but again, like in this, in, in the true gospel, Jesus gets all the glory. Like he saves us from beginning to end. He, every day, you know, every day I'm so aware, like, yep, I still need a savior. And uh, I'm sometimes just blown away by everything that he did for us. And we are hopefully soon all gonna get to see him face to face and maybe shed the last tears that we will cry. And it'll be tears of gratitude because he's just so good. And um, if, if you get just anything out of this, just remember that we have such a kind, gracious, loving Savior. He's so patient with us. And um, his kindness leads us to repentance. Not the fear that the enemy tries to put on us that gets us scared. It's the kindness of God. He, he gently leads us. And if we're feeling... If you're feeling something that feels more like compulsive and fearful and whatever, that's not the Lord. And while visions and dreams are great, um, we have to be really careful with that too, that we don't let extra biblical revelation supersede what we know from the scripture, the unchanging word of God. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you guys feel his presence and his peace. And remember, it's all about him. And um, he loves us and he's coming for us so soon. All right, bye, guys.